good afternoon. Yes, there's a German person in the room, so I'll do it in English. Okay, Nick will talk about this uh, W Therm smart thermostat he designed for, for his house. And um, after that, Jurjen Stellingwerf will do a talk about the LEMF, that's the Law Enforcement Monitoring Facilities in Dutch Tapkamers. So that's also a very interesting talk. It was not on the schedule, it has just been added. It's uh, how the LEMF worked and operated seven years ago, because that information can be disclosed and shared with you. So it's interesting. So first we have Nick and then we have Jurjen with the talk. So give him a warm welcome. Here is Nick Blankers. Well, hello, it's uh, nice to see that so many people actually turn up um, and are interested in my project. Uh, so as you might be able to tell, I designed a smart thermostat and during this uh, short talk, it's lightning talk, I'd like to take you through the entire process. Um, and like some of my other projects, um, this one actually started uh, with a request for my father because he wanted to be able to control the temperature uh, in his house remotely through a web interface. So um, the way I tackled that problem, I started with this solution. Now it might not look very elegant, but um, over there you can see, oh, actually, um, it's broken. Okay, well, uh, on the right you, you can actually, um, <laughs> you can see um, an Arduino, and on top of it is a DIY shield with an RF receiver. Now that RF, RF receiver, it's uh, used to fetch the temperature from a wireless temperature sensor. Um, and on the bottom left you can see a relay that I used to control the heating valve because we've got uh, district heating in our house. So it's just a simple valve that's either uh, completely open or completely closed. Um, and on the top left I used an ANC28 Ethernet module. And this actually um, um, was used for simple HTTP requests. And then I used another uh, real web server for a very simple interface. Um, now this actually worked, but not that well. Um, first of all, it was only a really simple thermostat. You could set a target temperature and basically nothing else. Second, um, the thermostat often was unable to receive the temperature through the RF module. And it also suffered from a lot of power issues uh, because of the Ethernet module. Um, so, um, yeah, and, and the Arduino also didn't really have enough storage to host its own um, website, so I had to use another web server. Um, so this Arduino solution, well, it's not really a good solution, but it was soon replaced by a Raspberry Pi, which you can see here. Now the Raspberry Pi is actually um, able to serve a decent web page, um, and on the web page, as you can see, you can see the, um, the current temperature, you can set a target temperature, and that's about it. Um, so now you could actually say, uh, challenge completed because I did what I was requested to do. Um, but this is actually where the real challenge started. You see I'm um, actually planning to study electrical engineering next year, um, but that means that first I have to get through the last year of high school. And with that, um, I actually have to do my own research project and write a thesis. And for my thesis I decided to develop uh, this project into a smart thermostat. And a smart thermostat, there, there are already a couple you can see here on the market. The Nest was one of the first um, in 2010. On top right you can see Navid Easy and there are also a couple of others that uh, arrived a bit later on the um, scene. Now aside from ease of use, because they uh, usually come with an app or web interface, these smart thermostats um, also aim to uh, save energy, which is also the goal of my uh, project. Um, and the smart aspect of my thermostat is that I actually calculated uh, how long it takes to heat up uh, the living room to a certain temperature. So, uh, for example, you can set the, um, like, you can set in a schedule that you want the temperature to be 20 degrees every morning at 8 o'clock. And then my thermostat will calculate how long it will take to uh, reach at 20 degrees, and it will start just in time to reach at 20 degrees um, at 8 o'clock in the morning, exactly 8 o'clock in the morning. Now, to do this uh, thermal calculation, I actually looked um, at the way heat flows in and out of a closed system, in this case a living room. Um, 
I kind of looked up the equations that go with it and using those I uh, was able to develop a differential equation. Now as you can see there are a lot of variables and these depend on the situation. So first I had to determine what these vari uh, variables actually were and to do this I took a couple of measurements. Um, so I set up an IP camera to take pictures of the heat meter, uh, the heat exchange unit in our house, so I could see how much uh, gigajoules worth of energy were added. Um, and then uh, it took pictures every five minutes while the room heated up. And then I had, had it um, stay at, at that heat for a couple of hours, and then I plotted um, the results. And I also uh, measured the inside and outside temperatures, and using those I was able to um, determine the variables that I needed for the equation. Now I actually had an equation that I could use um, to create a thermal model of our living room. Um, the next step is to actually verify that, that it, it works. And here you can see I'm comparing it to measurements that were taken. And as you can see it's actually uh, pretty spot on. So I decided to use this um, and to actually build my thermostat. And here you can see the end product. Um, it runs on a banana pie because uh, the Raspberry Pi that I used before because it keeps logging the temperatures to a database, it has a lot of read and write operations, and the SD card kept getting corrupted. So I used the Banana Pi, which has a SATA port, so I could reduce the uh, I.O. operations to the SD card. Um, and after, so um, actually the, the, the part that I just explained about term model took, the, uh, took up the majority of time in my research, and at the end I only had about a week left to program the entire thing, uh, so after spending about 10 hours a day for an entire week, the thermostat was actually done. And now I'll show you what the user interface looks like. So first you can log in and I um, use salts to hash the password. So I try to make it a bit secure as, as best as I can. And once you are, you are logged in, um, you can see this. This is kind of a basic representation of a thermostat. Uh, so I get an overview of the um, next uh, of the current target temperature, which in this case is 20 degrees, and I can see the time until the next set points. And the set points, they are actually set under the schedule tab, so the second tab at the top, I can't actually point to it right now. Um, but if I go to the schedule, you can see a couple of set points, so um, it's not really that visible. But you can see that on Monday at 8 o'clock in the morning, I want the temperature to be 20 degrees, then at 4 o'clock in the evening, I want it to be 16 degrees again, and so forth. Um, and the thermostat will use the temperature prediction to make sure that it reaches 20 degrees at exactly 8 in the morning. Um, and now if I go back to the main tab, um, I'm back to the overview. Now if I decide that at the moment 20 degrees is a bit too hot for my liking, I can uh, mainly just click the arrows and uh, set a manual target temperature, or I can just go back to uh, following the schedule. Um, and by the way, also the, the blue square, it turns red to let you know when the heater is on. Um, and last, the last kind of feature is the statistics tab where you can see uh, graphs of the inside and outside temperature for the last day, last week, and uh, the last year. Now for the best part, uh, my thermostat actually saves energy and this is compared to a regular clock thermostat that is installed in most homes uh, where I live. So a regular thermostat you would kind of set it to start heating, um, for example, um, you want the temperature to be uh, 20 degrees at 9 every morning. My thermostat just set it 9, 9 o'clock in the morning, 20 degrees, and you're done, and it will take care of the rest. And a regular thermostat, you kind of have to guess when it should turn on. Now, my house is not an ideal situation. Uh, it takes a lot of, lot of time and a lot of energy to heat up. So a regular thermostat, we would set it, for example, 2.5 degrees before the temperature needs to be reached. So this is kind of a guess. Um, and now to actually calculate how much energy I can save, I looked at um, outside temperature measurements. These are from the, the Dutch Royal Institute of um, Meteorology, I believe. Um, and this, these are the temperature measurements for one entire week in the winter. And for the first three days in the morning, you can see that the outside temperature is, well, pretty much constant. Um, and because the heating time, depends greatly on the outside temperature because the colder it is outside, the more heat will flow outside and the more energy it will take to heat up your room to a temperature. Um, so I actually used my model to calculate that for these first three days it would take really close to two and a half hours 
So um, at this point, the two thermostats, mine and the regular clock thermostat, would kind of, um, well, they would use the same amount of energy because they would both heat up two and a half hours uh, in advance. Now, if we look at the other four days of that week, you can see that the outside temperature is significantly higher. Um, and this also means that the heating time is reduced. Now, what my thermostat does is it looks at the outside temperature every morning and it uses this. Now, the, the regular thermostat, again, it would just heat up two and a half hours in advance. But I have actually calculated that for these uh, last four days, it would only take maybe just over one hour or close to two hours. Um, and my thermostat, it would uh, take this into account and it would start heating uh, later than the clock thermostat. So this is the way in which it saves energy. And in this week, only a couple of euros worth of uh, heat would be wasted by the um, regular thermostat um, and saved by mine. But this means that if we extrapolate this over an entire winter, um, it's a total saving of 20 euros. Um, now, the total bill of materials for my project was just over 40 euros, which means that um, the thermostat will have paid for itself um, in less than three years. And after that, you will, have, you will save um, 20 euros or even more because I just looked at the winter. But you can also have, for example, in the autumn and spring, you probably also use um, your heating. So I can actually um, save more than 20 euros every year on your energy bill. Um, now, before I end this presentation, I'd like to thank a couple of people. Um, first of all, Albert, uh, where's Albert? There you are. Albert, he helped me a tremendous amount uh, with my research, mainly the physics part because it's quite complicated. Um, and I'd also like to thank Dimitri, obviously, where is Dimitri? There he is, for organizing this event and for having me on his stage. Um, and finally, I thank you all. Uh, I'd like to thank you all for your attention. So, by the way, if you uh, if you want to take a look at my code or my uh, final thesis, it's all on my GitHub. And if you have any questions, um, well, I suppose you could ask them now. Who has a question for Nick? Okay, Manfred. In, in, in your uh, uh, calculations, you only, only count the financial uh, uh, part, but how much is it in comfort? Uh, what do you mean? Now, well, your, your, your thermostat is more comfortable than other, other ter uh, thermostats? Yeah, do you mean that it's easier to use? Yeah. Or, yeah. Yeah, because the web interface, you can open it from every device. Um, it's just a simple kind of web app on a mobile phone. It displays correctly and on your desktop, and you can just, wherever you are, you can just set it. So in that way, it's easier to use. Yeah. So it's not only financial gain, it's also comforting gain. Yeah. So um, my life isn't that regular, and I, I don't wake up the same time every day. Um, wh what I'm looking for is a big button right next to my bed when I go to sleep that does two things. Set an alarm clock for eight hours <laughs> and make sure that everything's warm again in eight hours. How hard would it be to um, hack a timer into this, this instead of the schedule? Instead of the schedule, well, not very hard. Um, and if you'd like to do that, all of the code is online, so I suggest you just go ahead and look at it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. More questions? If nobody has any questions, I have a question. Oh, who has a question? Do you consider it done, or are you planning on further developing it? Um, well, I have some additional ideas to uh, develop it. Uh, first of all, um, what other smart thermostats already do, um, and what I want to implement is some kind of detection to see if uh, anyone is actually home. Because if no one is home, why bother turning on the heat? Uh, so, for example, I could use, uh, I could scan for connected devices, smartphones. Um, everyone in my family owns one. So if nobody is at home, no smartphones will be on the network, and I can probably use that. Hmm. Pretty cool. Or you could also integrate your RFID chip implant. Um, yeah, of course. But yeah. um, the, 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 the problem, well, that's a good idea, but the problem is that not everyone in my family is tagged. So. <laughs> <laughs> yes, right, yeah. We can't scan that from the whole app. More questions? Yeah, I am.
uh, could we integrate this with uh, something like SatNav? If you, so if you're getting in the car and you're driving home, you set your SatNav to go home, and then your thermostat would that would be cool. Well, that, 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 that's a possibility, yes. Um, I, I didn't really write the code to be very modular and, and open to modification because I only had a really short time. Um, but you can just rewrite maybe a part of the code and you can definitely implement that. Or you could inter integrate it with your smartphone to do yeah. some sort of per parameter scanning. So if you're like 30 kilometers from home that the heating already starts, so the living room is heated up. Yeah, for example. <laughs> <laughs> so basically you don't have to get a longer winter kilometers. <laughs> <laughs> other questions. <laughs> well if there's no other questions, I have a question because um, as some of you might know, Nick and I live in the same neighborhood. So uh, I'm really interested and uh, I would like to help you develop it further and you can install it in my home. Your home. <laughs> So if there's no further questions, this was an awesome presentation by Nick. I'm very proud for our Bidler um, deal-namer. <laughs> a participant, I can't say member. So, ladies and gentlemen, give him a tafelend applause. Thank you. Nick Blankers.